The Edmunds Karp algorithm is a modification of the Ford Fulkerson method for finding the max flow in a flow network. A flow network is basically a directed graph containing a source node S and a sync node T and all edges have a non-negative capacity i.e. this value on the right here. A flow F in a network is a value on each edge where the value of the flow is less than or equal to the edge capacity. It is a, for example these values on the left here. In the full Fulkerson method there is a constraint that it, after each iteration of the the method, the net flow at a vertex must always be zero, which is to say that the sum of all the flows entering a vertex minus the sum of all the flows exiting a vertex is equal to zero. For example, with V1, 3 plus 2 equals 5, the sum of the flows entering the network, the vertex, sorry, and 5 is the sum of the flows exiting the vertex. 5 minus 5 equals zero. The Ford Fulkerson method basically finds the ma solves the max flow problem by finding a residual network from the given network and then finding an augmenting path each time until and repeating the process until no longer no more augmenting paths can be found what is a residual network or well, let's take this network g for example the residual network is built by finding the residual capacity for all the edges in the network, where the residual capacity of an edge is the capacity of that edge minus the flow. So for example, this edge S to A, the residual capacity of this edge would be 6 minus 2, which is equal to 4. After finding all the residual capacities for the edge, you also add an edge for each edge in the opposite direction where the capacity of that edge is the flow from the original edge. This can be seen here. So the residual capacity from S to A was 4, and the flow from S to A was 2, so there is an edge in the opposite direction from 2. This is done for all edges in the network. So let's take a simple example of the ford fulkerson method. So we say we are given this network G, a very simple network. We would, we would first find the residual network G of F. However, as there is zero flow currently in this network, the residual network will look exactly the same because we don't draw edges on that have zero flow. So the next step would be to find an augmenting path, which is any path from S to T in the network. For example, this path in red here. The next step would be to choose the minimum capacity of all the edges in your augmenting path. So the minimum out of 1, 2 and 1, which is 1. With this, you update the flow by adding a flow of 1 on all the edges in the augmenting path, like so. The flow for the other edges is 0. From this network, you now create your residual network again, like so. And then you'll find another augmenting path from S to T, as this one in red is. And then from here, you choose the minimum again out of all the edges in the augmenting path and update your flow. So adding one, adding one there, and this edge since it w was already at max flow, sorry, this edge now has flow of zero as we have pushed back one in the opposite direction to what we originally did. So it's one minus one. From here, you would again find a residual network. However, no augmenting path can now be found in this residual network as the arrows are both facing this way so there's no more augmenting path to be found hence the max flow is given by this flow network 
and the max flow is the sum of all the flows leaving the source. So here it is 1 plus 1, which is equal to 2. The Edmund Karp algorithm differs from the Ford Fulkerson method in that each time here, when you are choosing an augmenting path, you would choose the shortest augmenting path via using, for example, breadth first search, where all edges are given unit length. The reason for doing this is that it reduces the time complexity from the Ford Fulkerson method from O of E F, where E is the number of edges and F is the max flow that is to be found in the network to O V E squared where V is the number of vertices and E is the number of edges.